see, all through this book, what is interesting, uh, among other things, is that William is on our side, uh, and he paints uh, the company as, as evil. He's, he's never on the company's side. Uh, why is that, William? Well, I wouldn't agree with that. I, I mean, when I do this lecture in London, I'm very much emphasising the loot and pillage. No, no, the opposite of uh, the loot and pillage, in the sense that the Brits don't understand this, don't get it, and have been taught it. It's not, a, it's not taught in British textbooks anymore. The empire is totally off, off the menu. So my children moved from learning about the Tudors to learning about the Nazis with a brief stop on how the British liberated the slaves, giving the impression that the British were one long anti-racist crusade throughout their history culminating in the removal of Hitler. Um, and the idea that there were you know, any illiberal episodes in our history is, is simply not even discussed in British textbooks. But when I'm here, I'm discussing, you know, I'm very much emphasizing things like the Jagat Sets, collaboration, the fact that Bengalis, I'm sure even Malayalis, um, seem to regard the company as the least worst option, with the other two options being the Marathas and the Mughals. And the way that so many, I mean, it's, all this stuff is in the book, the, the, the way that uh, so many Bengalis decided to put their fortunes into company bonds, so providing the finance to, to conquer the, the Marathas and so on. Yeah. Uh, and these are uncomfortable truths, and I see this, you know, I, this is, what's enjoyable about a historian writing, being a historian writing about this period is that you're dealing with nationalist myths that have been fed into people with their mother's milk and in school textbooks for generations. And so much of it is rubbish. Yeah. And it's very easy, in a sense, to go back to the contemporary documents and to say it wasn't Mir Jafar, it was Jagat Set. Correct. Um, so, am I on your side? I'm trying to give it, I, I'm trying to say it as I see it. I don't think, I mean, what, the point about the company and why it's quite easy to write about the company as opposed to the Raj is that the company never pretends to be about anything except making a profit. Any more than Goldman Sachs is there to do anything except make a profit for its shareholders and for its partners. The, Goldman Sachs doesn't go out in the world saying our whole point is corporate social responsibility and we support this, this school in Harlem and there's a drama company that we give money to and, and we do the opera in the Metropolitan. Uh, you know, they don't do that. We're there to make a profit. So is the company. And so that whole Victorian rhetoric that you get in the 19th century about civilizing mission and so on, you don't get a whiff of that. And it's very straightforward. So, I mean, this, 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 there isn't a counter-argument to this. No one can look at the company and say it went to India to help the natives. They went to make a huge profit. They made it very successfully. They went back home. 